This is the oldest drawing I have. This was made in 1862 by a guy traveling with the Union Army. I want you to notice up here that the old wall is there. It's up at spring, it was there during this. It was built in 1838. And the reason they built that is when they came up here in town and started clearing everything, they forgot about something important. When it rained, the mud's gotta go somewhere. So they go down into the park and they were stopping the spring up. So they had to build that rock wall to catch the mud so it wouldn't go into the spring. Bet you never heard that before. <laughs> This was also a drawing made during the Civil War. And if you ask me if I figured it out, the answer is no. I hadn't figured it out. But I do have a newspaper it came out of. My son bought me that for Christmas one day. This was a painting in the 1890s. It was on plate. Showing plain. You see there's a walk around. You see the road hadn't even been put there. We went around it by a road when I was a kid. You see that? You see the stones of a walk walkway going back up on top of the hill. Where did you say that? That's Spring Park. That's the actual spring is set. Here's the small spring here and the large one there and there's that rock wall to prevent mud. Yeah, just be free to ask me anything because if I don't know it, I can sure lie about it. Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, Hindman's Mill is down there on the spring behind the uh, I don't know what you call it now. The fruit stand, there used to be a plant stand. I don't know who's there now. Oh, Back, Mom, yes. Oh, Mom. Back behind there, this was the meat meal. This company had three meals at one time operating. This is a picture I don't know what I have a picture of. This one was built in 1830. And it got torn down by 1930, 40, right in there, got torn down. Ah, another good pick. This is the spring. As you can see, the spring. There's the cotton gins on top. That one right there is an ice house for the first ice house. And we got here about 1882. There's the drawing of the water from the right. Oh, there's a steam engine right there. You see a little steam coming out. Uh, they go up there and they had a electric generator up there in the ice house. The guy that owned it fell in love with this woman and sort of helped him out a little bit. He ran a special wire to her house and she was one of the first people to have electricity to this company. I never heard how that turned out yet. I never found the end of that story. First bridge across the creek. If y'all go now to the rock, where the rock bridge is today, or what do you want to call it? Covered, I think, covered, covered, place like this one. I, at, the rock bridge is right here. This one, if you look down off the west side of the rock bridge today, you'll see these uh, stands still there. <coughs> the old uh, Indian mound is right there in the top. The old Indian mound. It was bulldozed about 1930. Now, where is that, John? All right, so going down into the park, Water Street, the rock bridge is right here. Okay, I see. That's the easiest way I think to identify. Okay. I may have seen that picture before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The polio plunge. Swimming pool. Now that thing was cold. And they changed the water out on Mondays. So nobody swam in on Mondays and Tuesdays. Because they got it out of the spring. And you want to know why spring's called cold water or oak oak <coughs> possum. Get in the pool at that time. Uh, and wasn't it green? Do what? Wasn't Green in it? Mm -hmm. I don't remember the green, I just remember the cold. Okay, I heard people say it, you couldn't see through it. It was so green, it was dark. I don't remember, it, uh, like I said, when I was a kid, I know they only caught me jumping off up there one time. There she's saying to jump off high dive. There's the original park building right here, which I have no picture of it. You can barely see that bridge right there. See the bridge right there? And there's the bridge that I just showed you. John, where the green trees are there? Yeah, it's got all that tree here. And like I said, there was a fence around it. You entered, and there was sort of like a concession stand, something right there, what you want to call it right here. And then there was another place over here to change clothes. 
Is that the same pool that was there always? Or did they it's the same pool. All they did was fill it in and put a parking lot over it. So apparently it's still down there. I don't know whether they punched a hole in it or not. I've never seen it here. This is the original park building. Have y'all ever seen this picture before? In your book, maybe. It might be in the book, I don't know. That is for the, the rock structure is today, I guess what you want to call it. It's located there. Harvey Robbins wanted to build that back and couldn't find a way of doing it down the park. John, what, what years was that there? 1928. <laughs> I thought it was only. What was it used for? What was it used for? It was a park. Everything that was in down the park at that time was part of the fairgrounds. So your displays went in there, especially off the floral. You sold your wares there, sort of the independent. Go in and sell your wares, build it. That porch went all the way around it. Why did they tear it down? Um, I guess nature did that, flooded it down, destroyed it. This is William Goss, and you're watching North Alabama Local History. Castle Gates. Uh, how many of you there's Castle Gates down there? Castle Gates at the end of Main Street, going into the old fairgrounds, main fairground area. I'll show you a picture of the of right where it is. The Yankee soldiers in their diaries would write about passing through the Castle Gates. So when it was built, I don't know, but it was there during the Civil War. This is taken about where the cafe is today, I guess. Here's your castle gates at the end of Main Street. That's Main Street. There's your horse stables. There's your stands for your racetrack. There's your finish line. The baseball and football field are right here. And guess what football field was done? Hmm. This makes it more. This makes it more fun. The American Legion controlled the park at the time football field was made, so it was called Legion Field. Yeah. Bear Bryant coached his first ball game in Legion Field. <laughs> Strange how things work. How many of you that Coach Bear Bryant coached his first ball game in Deshler? Ah, oh, just the back row, back in the back row back there. Hey, John, I changed the subject. What is that big building in the background there? Is that supposed to be the south side of Main Street? What, this one right here? Yeah. That was the fast through stand grandstands. What? Grandstands. Oh, okay. I'll show you. I got a picture. I'll show you. Oh, thank you. There you are. Yeah. There's your grandstands. There's your finish line. There's the horses coming to it. And uh, if you had boxing matches or any other thing, they used this here and put the boxing stuff here. All the big events were held here. You need to know them like that. Do what? I say we need another one like that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably couldn't get away with all the gambling that used to be in this town. All right, here it is looking down Main Street. There's your park building, and there's your castle gates going into the park. There's the spring before the dam was built. And it's solid rock bottom, by the way. You can go right through that spring. We put heavy equipment in and didn't have a bit of trouble. Legion Field. The guy being over right there is, is Chapel. You can see the stands. Here's the band performing in Legion Field. And this is them getting ready for a ball game. Now that picture right there, I'll tell you the story about Chow. I used to sit down with him and get all of his stories because he could tell some stories that you're not going to find anywhere else. So he, I asked him about it here in Legion Field, and he said, the dumbest rule that ever put out in football was two years at Legion Field. I said, what's the dumbest rule? He said, they made a rule in Alabama football that coach could not call a play. The quarterback did. 
I said, you couldn't. He said, I don't know what I'm supposed to tell anybody anything. The quarterback had to do it all. He said, well, we were playing Russell one day. Said they, Russell drove the ball down, got in the red zone. He said, we held them on fourth down. And the team jumped up and looked over toward me and they ran up and ran a play. Said the referee went bananas. They said there was no way that the quarterback called that play. They came over there and threatened him and everything else. And he finally said, if you can't prove anything, go back out there and leave me alone. And he called the team over and said, don't y'all ever do that again. He said, well, wouldn't you have it? Second half, they did it again. They ran up, ran up like He said, all the referees went crazy then. And he said, prove it or shut up. That's what he said he told him. And I said, what, what was going on? He said, well, we knew they were going to do it. He said, our two favorite plays was 27 left and right and 36 left and right. He said, I took the younger boys that weren't going to play. I put number 27 on one of them and number 36 on the other. And I called one of them. If I put my hand on his left shoulder and his number was 27, that meant 27 left. If I put my hand on his right, that's 27 right. He said, I did it for two years and never got caught. <laughs> and I said, Chuck, you mean you were cheating? He looked at me and said, why, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one story. I'll never forget that because I was expecting him to explain why he was cheating. No, he just did it. I'm cheating. Oh, boy.